Yeah. Hey, coach. Good morning. Uh, I was hoping for an overall health update on on the team on Xavier, Jordan, and Logan, <clears throat> and specifically on Xavier. Is he far enough along in his rehab now that you are comfortable that he's going to be back at some point this season? Not really. I mean, he, you know, he's been out there trying to shoot a little bit. He just got out of the boot. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I just don't know, you know, I mean, it's hard to, hard to say when he's going to actually be back. Um, you know, if you ask Xavier, you know, he thinks he can play tomorrow and it's, you know, it's, listen, I've been around basketball a long time. It's impossible. You know, the guy broke his foot. So I know I'm not using that in a negative way. I wish he could play tomorrow, but I don't know. You know, I mean, at this point, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to deal with the guys that are in uniform. Alec. Well, hold on. Let me ask with Geronimo. I, Geronimo, I think, shot a little bit yesterday. Uh, you know, he's had a calf strain. So uh, that's what's keeping him out. And Logus, Logan has got a, a major sinus infection again. So, you know, I mean... You know, you know, I, you know, I, I've, I've known players that have had calf problems, and that's something you can't tinker with or mess around with, or you could, you can be out for a longer period of time. You know, if you come back too soon, so I don't know. I don't know what the outcome is. I haven't gotten a report today. You know, since I've been in the office, and I'll get it here in a few, on on uh, on those guys and see where they are. Thank you, Alec. Hey, Coach, uh, obviously looking at Purdue, that offense revolves around a guy like Zach Eady, but what impresses you most about their backcourt, starting two freshmen and kind of the job that they've done up to this point in the season? They've done a tremendous job. I mean, what can you say? You know, um, you know, you got playing with two freshmen and a big guy in the middle. Um, that says a lot. You know, Matt has done a great job with his ball club. Um, uh, you know, they say you you can't win with freshmen, you know, a lot of times in college basketball, but they're proving that, you know, they they belong and they're in a system that fits them and they're playing well. Todd Golden. Hey, Mike. Uh, you know, when it comes to a player as influential as, as Edie is with Purdue, you know, how, how risky is it to get too caught up in – you know, changing your own principles to try to account for him. Uh, how do you kind of strike that balance uh, when you have a player like that? Well, it's tough. You know, I mean, I've, you know, coming out of the NBA, I've been a, around, you know, dominant centers. And uh, I love Akeem Elijah. Well, now he's not a king, but, you know, you get so in tune to, you know, st just stopping him. But, you know, they got other supporting pieces around him that's played well this year. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a double hit, you know I mean? You just, you got to lock in the ED. I mean, and not, you know, I thought last year we played him well, but you know, he's playing more minutes this year. You know, he is the guy, you know, they had the other big guy that they had Williams, I think last year along with him. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm watching film and watching other teams play, man. I mean, he's a tough matchup. I mean, for anybody. Um, and we just got to make sure that, you know, he doesn't go off, um, and, and, and try to play him in, um, uh, as tough as we can. I mean, you know, as you know, last year, we, you know, here, Trace didn't even get a chance to play him. You know, he, <laughs> he played 11 minutes, I think 11, 12 minutes. Um, but, you know, uh, we got to focus in on the whole team. I mean, because they, you know, I look at what Gibbs last night had 29 points, I believe. Gillis had 29 last night. Um, so, I mean, we just got to make a total team effort to just play. You know, I mean, I don't want to get caught up into this, you know, Trace Edie thing. I mean, they're both great players. They play in well this year for their both teams. And um, we just got to see where it, where it leads us. Tom Brew. Mike, with the with someone like him though and all the shooters around him, how important is to, is it to do a lot of different things defensively against them through the course of the game? And secondly, 
how important is it really just the, to, to defend better without fouling? It seems that's been a bit of an issue for you guys lately. Well, again, you know, I don't mind the fouls if, if it's, if it's fair both ways, um, you know, I mean, I'm telling our guys to play hard and try to play more physical and, and get into the ball and, and things of that nature. And, you know, I don't think our team should be punished for that. You know, there are teams that do it too, you know, and, um, um, you know, when you look at Edie, he's, he's seen double teams, he's seen zones, the guy is just a big presence in the middle that demands the ball and, and they go to him a lot, a lot more than they did last season because he didn't play as the minutes that he's playing now last season. So, you know, my thing is, you know, we got to just play him as hard as we can play him and make sure that the surrounding pieces don't, you know, go off and, and see what happens. I mean, we're going to have to play, you know, too. I mean, offensively, we're going to have to make shots uh, to keep them honest as well. But our defense has got to be a signature coming into that game. I mean, we're going to have to defend and rebound with this team. Zach. Mike, I recognize there, there may not be just a hard and fast answer to this question, but you mentioned Gillis. He had more points last night than he's had, I think, the previous six games before that. What's the balance you strike when you're looking at a game plan between – not wanting to alter, you know, sort of what you plan, but when a, a player has a game that's that much of an outlier, not wanting to maybe ignore it, I guess. I mean, you can't ignore it. I mean, guy gets 29 points in a college game, you know, he can play. So, I mean, and, and hell, if he didn't get 29 points, I still think he's a good player. So, I mean, you just got to respect everybody that plays on the floor and then play them as hard as you can. I mean, it's no, it ain't going to be no, it ain't scientific or some big deal where we got to figure out how to stop just guilt. They got a good team. I mean, they're 20 something and one. So they doing something right. Uh, so, I mean, you, you're going to have to play their team and it's, you know, and they got two nice pieces with Gillis and, and Edie, but they got surrounding pieces too that are played well for them as well. Jim. Yeah. Coach, thanks uh, for your time. Um, they're freshmen, obviously, two freshmen uh, that have played pretty well for, for the most part of the season, but they are freshmen. Indiana, of course, with Jalen uh, as a freshman, but uh, some experience with Trey. What can you do or planning to do with, can you put try to put more pressure on, on those freshmen to try to make it uncomfortable for them? What is the plan or thoughts uh, going into the, to that? Listen, guys, we, you know, when we're good, we defend, we rebound, and and we share the ball, and 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 we shooting the ball. I mean, coming into the Maryland game, we had been playing great offense. I mean, no doubt about it. everybody. The ball was moving, and guys were making shots and feeling good about themselves. Well, the same thing has got to apply on Saturday. I mean, you know. We got to make shots, and then our defense has got to hold, man. We got to defend and rebound. I mean, it will be a battle because they defend too. They try to get after it as well. So, you know, when you got two teams that are banging around, you know, best man's going to win. You know, that's kind of how I look at it. And, you know, I'm just anxious to get to the game to see where we are against, you know, the number one team in the nation. Alex. Thanks for the time. We appreciate it. Um, Tamar obviously had that really big game against Michigan State, but you look at the other five games in this last six game stretch, he's had nine points total. Do you need to see more consistency out of him offensively? And maybe what can you do to maybe get that out of him? Well, it's not like he's not playing the minutes. You know, we just got to get him in a good place, you know, mentally, because he can make shots. Uh, and when he makes shots, you know, we're pretty good. Um, you know, I mean, I look at our perimeter play the other night. You know, we were five for 32. Uh, and that's, you know, you're lucky to even be in the game. I mean, obviously our defense was okay. You know, you, you hold them to 30 and 20-something and from the three. Uh, that's why you you were in the game. But, you know, it's hard to beat teams when you go five for 32 uh, with your perimeter play. So, and our perimeter play has been pretty good as of late. You know, the five – game winning streak, you know, everybody was, you know, pitching in and doing their part. And uh, 
that's how it's got to be, you know, the rest of the way if we're going to continue to win games. Tyler. Hey, Coach. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, obviously, growing up in Indiana, do you just have any favorite memories of the IU-Purdue rivalry or, or things that stick out watching it when you were growing up? Well, again, I mean, uh, you know, it's – it's, it's just been a big, it's the biggest game in the state of Indiana. Um, you know, I was recruited by Purdue and, and, and had a visit set to go to Purdue and I canceled it right at the last minute uh, based on my conversation with coach and I, cause I'd already committed, you know, I, I hadn't been anywhere. So I was just going to take a, take me a trip and didn't make the trip and glad I didn't, you know, cause Indiana's home for me and, and where I always wanted to go. But the rivalry is, is just what it is, man. I mean, you know, they have their fan base and we have our fan base. And, you know, the games have been pretty competitive. I know last year both games were very, very competitive games. And, I, you know, I can't help but think, you know, Saturday's going to be a competitive game as well when we go up to Purdue. Last question, Tom. Mike, you spent 40 years in the NBA, and I've, I always shake my head when I listen to people talk about how there's no place in the league for a guy like Zach Eady's skills and no place in the league for a guy with Trace's skills. When you look at those two guys, you and you see what you see, especially what they've both done this year, those are professional players in your mind, aren't they? Without a doubt. I mean, you know, I look at our guy in, in, in Trace Jackson, I mean, he rebounds, he blocks shots, he defends, he finishes at the rim, he runs the floor, he passes the ball. I mean, what part of basketball, you know, as a coach, you know, you can use all those things on a basketball floor. You know, that's what's amazing to me. And here's, you know, Big Edie. He, you know, Edie gets up and down the Floyd, he might not be as mobile as some bigs, but he's he's mobile enough to do what he's doing. Uh, and he's a low down low, you know. So this thing of a of, of big men, you know, can't play in the NBA or don't have a is 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 crazy. I mean, somebody's going gonna take a shot at both of these players, and they're gonna be happy as hell when they get them because you know, I don't know what Edie does, but I got to think he's a good young man and he works hard and our guy does the same thing. So, I mean, you're getting quality people, you know, you just got to teach them the NBA game once they get at that level, you know, because it is a, it is a, a, a another jump and uh, you, you, you definitely is, is faster. You know, you got to, you, you, you got to figure out things uh, once you get at that level, but I think both of them are capable of playing in the league and they deserve to be in the NBA because they're good enough. All right, coach. Thank you very much.